welcome to Grab and Go Info. I am a PhD with over 10 years of hands-on experience in data science and machine learning. The projects I did in the past helped retail, CPG, finance, insurance, pharmaceutical, nonprofit, government, and technology companies make data-driven decisions. The goal of Grab and Go Info is to share data science and machine learning knowledge and provide code templates to make data scientists' life easier. If this is something that you are interested in, please subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Support Vector Machine is a supervised machine learning model for classifications and regressions. Since SVM is commonly used for classification, we will use the classification model as an example in this tutorial. We will cover What's the intuition for the support vector machine algorithm? What are the most critical hyperparameters for support vector machine? How to tune hyperparameters for support vector machine using grid search, random search, and Bayesian optimization. Let's get started. In step one, we will discuss the intuition behind the support vector machine algorithm. At a high level, the algorithm follows three steps. One, create hyperplanes that separate the classes. 2. Compare the margin of the hyperplanes and pick the hyperplane with the largest margin. Margin is the shortest distance between the hyperplane and the data points. Maximal margin classifier picks a hyperplane that maximizes the margin. One drawback of the maximal margin classifier is that it is sensitive to the outliers in the training dataset. Support vector machine solves the sensitivity problem by allowing misclassifications. A margin is called a soft margin when misclassifications are permitted. Therefore, a support vector classifier is also called a soft margin classifier. The data points on edge and within the soft margin are called support vectors. The number of misclassifications allowed in the soft margin is determined by comparing the cross-validation results. The one with the best cross-validation result will be selected. 3. Make predictions for the new data points based on which side of the hyperplane the new data falls in. In step 2, we will discuss the hyperparameters for support vector machine. In Python's Sklearn implementation of the support vector classification model, there is a list of different hyperparameters. You can check out the complete list in the Sklearn documentation here. The most critical hyperparameters for SVM are kernel, C, and gamma. Kernel function transforms the training dataset into higher dimensions to make it linearly separatable. The default kernel function for the Python implementation of the support vector classifier is the radial basis function, which is usually referred to as RBF. The kernel function can take other values such as linear, poly, RBF, sigmoid, precomputed, or callable. C is the L2 regularization parameter. The value of C is inversely proportional to the strength of the regularization. To learn more about regularization, please check out my previous tutorial on lasso versus ridge versus elastic net regularization for classification model. I will put the link in the video description. When C is small, the penalty for misclassification is small, and the strength of the regularization is large. So a decision boundary with a large margin will be selected. When C is large, the penalty for misclassification is large, and the strength of the regularization is small. A decision boundary with a small margin will be selected to reduce misclassifications. Gamma is the kernel coefficient for RBF, poly, and sigmoid. It can be seen as the inverse of the support vector influence radius. The gamma parameter highly impacts the model performance. Gamma can take the value of scale, auto, or a float value. The default value for the Python Sklearn implementation is scale since version 0.22. When gamma is small, the support vector influence radius is high. If the gamma value is too small, the radius of the support vectors covers the whole training dataset, and the pattern of the data will not be captured. When gamma is large, the support vector influence radius is low. If the gamma value is too large, the support vector radius is too small to utilize C to prevent overfitting. In the third step, let's import the Python libraries needed for this tutorial. We will use the breast cancer dataset for this tutorial. So datasets from Sklearn need to be imported. Pandas and NumPy are imported for data processing. Standard Scalar is for data standardization. For model training, 
We imported train test split for creating training and testing datasets in SVC for the support vector classification model. For hyperparameter tuning, we imported stratified K-fold, grid search CV, randomized search CV from Sklern. We also imported hyperopt and cross val score for Bayesian optimization. In the fourth step, the breast cancer data from the Sklern library is loaded and transformed into a pandas data frame. The information summary shows that the dataset has 569 records and 31 columns. The target variable distribution shows 63% of 1s and 37% of zeros in the dataset. 1 means the patient has breast cancer. And 0 represents the patient does not have breast cancer. In step 5, we split the dataset into 80% training and 20% testing dataset. Random state makes the random split results reproducible. The training dataset has 455 records, and the testing dataset has 114 records. In step 6, we will standardize the features. Standardization is to change the features to the same scale. It is calculated by extracting the mean and divided by the standard deviation of each feature. After standardization, each feature has zero mean and unit standard deviation. Standardization should be fit on the training dataset only to prevent test dataset information from leaking into the training process. Then, the test dataset is standardized using the fitting results from the training dataset. There are different types of scalars. Standard scalar and min-max scalar are most commonly used. For a dataset with outliers, we can use robust scalar. In this tutorial, we will use standard scalar. We can see that after using standard scalar, all the features have zero mean and unit standard deviation. Let's get the summary statistics for the training data before standardization as well. And we can see that the mean and standard deviation can be very different in scale. For example, the area error has a mean value of 40 and a standard deviation of 47. On the other hand, the compactness error has a mean of about 0.026 and a standard deviation of 0.019. In step 7, we will create a support vector machine model with default hyperparameters as the baseline model. We can see that the default hyperparameter has the C value of 1, the gamma value of scale, and the kernel value of RBF. Next, let's fit the model using the standardized training data and check the accuracy score. We get 98.25% accuracy for the default hyperparameters. In step 8, we will use grid search to find the best hyperparameter combinations for the support vector machine model. Grid search is an exhaustive hyperparameter search method. It trains models for every combination of specified hyperparameter values. Therefore, it can take a long time to run if we test out more hyperparameters and values, especially for larger datasets. For this reason, we would like to have the grid search space relatively small so the process can finish in a reasonable time frame. The search space includes the hyperparameters and their values grid search builds models for. In this example, we will tune three hyperparameters, C, gamma, and kernel. The other hyperparameters can be tuned in the same way. Using the log space function from the NumPy library, we created three values for C and three values for gamma. For gamma, the Sklern values of scale and auto are also included, so there are a total of five values for gamma. Two kernels, RBF and poly, will be tested. Scoring is the metric to evaluate the cross-validation results for each model. We set scoring equals accuracy. The scoring option can take more than one metric in the list. Stratified K-fold is used for the cross-validation. It helps us keep the class ratio in the folds the same as the training dataset. And splits equals three means we are doing three-fold cross-validation. Shuffle equals true means the data are shuffled before splitting. Random state equals zero makes the shuffle reproducible. We specified a few options for grid search qv. Estimator equals SVC means we are using support vector classifier as the model. Param grid equals param grid takes our predefined search space for the grid search. Scoring equals scoring set the performance evaluation metric. Because we set the scoring to accuracy. The model will use accuracy as the evaluation metric. Refit equals accuracy enables refitting the model with the best parameters on the whole training dataset. And jobs equals minus one means parallel processing using all the processors. 
CV equals K fold takes the stratified K fold we define. Verbose controls the number of messages returned by the grid search. The higher the number, the more information is returned. Verbose equals zero means silent. The grid search cross validation results show that the C value of 1, gamma value of scale, and kernel of RBF gave us the best results. This happened to be the same hyperparameters as the default value. The best average training accuracy is 96.93%, and the accuracy score for the testing dataset is 98.25%, which is the same as the baseline model. If you find the information helpful so far, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. In step 9, we use a random search for support vector machine hyperparameter tuning. Since random search randomly picks a subset of hyperparameter combinations, we can afford to try more values. If at least one of the parameters is a distribution, sampling with replacement is used for a random search. Sampling without replacement is used if all parameters are provided as a list. Each list is treated as a uniform distribution. We increase the number of C and gamma values from 3 to 21 for the random search. For gamma, the Sklern values of scale and auto are also included, so there are a total of 23 values for gamma. The same scoring metric and cross-validation values used in grid search are used for the random search. But for a random search, we need to specify a value for n -iter. The number of parameter combinations sampled. We are randomly testing 100 combinations for this example. The random search cross-validation results show that the C value of 1000, gamma value of 0.0001 and kernel of RBF gave us the best result. The best average training accuracy is 97.14%, and the accuracy score for the testing dataset is 97.37%, which is slightly lower than the grid search results. Note that because each time the random search is performed, a set of different hyperparameters will be randomly selected. So the best hyperparameters can be different each time random search is conducted. In step 10, we apply Bayesian optimization on the same search space as the random search. There are different types of Bayesian optimization. Hyperopt is used in this example. We defined an objective function that takes in the parameters and returns the loss. Since the goal is to maximize the accuracy value, we set max scores as the best score and set the loss to be negative best score. This setting ensures maximizing accuracy while minimizing the loss. Fmin is used to optimize the objective function. Hyperopt currently has three algorithms. They are random search, tree of pars and estimators, and adaptive TPE. We are using TPE as the search algorithm. After the Bayesian optimization search, we get the best loss of minus 0.9868, meaning that the accuracy value is 98.68%. We can print out the parameters for best loss and their index in the search space. We got the C value of 1, gamma value of 0.1, and kernel value of poly. Next, we apply the best hyperparameters to the SVC and make predictions. It gives an accuracy score of 94.74%. Theoretically, the Bayesian optimization algorithm is more efficient than the random search algorithm. This is because random search pick hyperparameters for each model independently. While Bayesian optimization utilized previous model's information when choosing the hyperparameters for the next model, the Bayesian optimization best model performance is not as good, probably because the number of max evals equals 100 is not large enough for the algorithm to find the optimal values. In this tutorial, we covered how to tune support vector machine hyperparameters using Python. You learned. What's the intuition for the support vector machine algorithm? What are the most important hyperparameters for support vector machine? How to do hyperparameter tuning for support vector machine in Python using grid search, random search, and Bayesian optimization. We used a toy dataset for this example to illustrate the hyperparameter tuning process. In real projects, I usually see random search and Bayesian optimization produce the best model performances. If you found the information in this tutorial helpful, Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. I publish tutorials on machine learning, deep learning, and big data processing every week. If you prefer the written version of the tutorial, please go to grabandgoinfo.com.
I will put the link in the video description. This is the blog post for this tutorial. It has all the code and explanations in the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.